Hey guys, Dr. Brian Mould, the Diabetes Coach, back with another Diabetes Coach on the go episode. And today I want to talk to you about something called the athlete's paradox and how it relates to insulin resistance. So uh, there's a lot of information out there online about how insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes is caused by an accumulation of fat in the muscle cell, what's termed ectopic fat or intramyocellular lipids, which is essentially lipid droplets that get stored in the muscle tissue. And there's many reasons for why this can happen. Uh, essentially, it's an overflow of fat from the uh, adipocytes, from the fat cells, and it starts getting stored in the muscle tissue. It is associated with type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance and prediabetes and metabolic syndrome. So like most of the information that's confusing online, there is truth to the underlying theory that it's a sign of insulin resistance and it can lead to type 2 diabetes. We know that it's associated with type 2 diabetes when you have a large number of these lipid droplets or fat droplets in the muscle cell stored uh, ectopically instead of being stored in the uh, adipocytes or the fat cells, the subcutaneous fat, which is the fat that we kind of carry on the uh, outside of our, of our bodies. But when we look a little bit more closely, uh, this actually gets a bit more confusing. So there's something called the athlete's paradox. When they look at someone with type 2 diabetes and see a high number of fat droplets, that's associated with decreased insulin sensitivity or insulin resistance in the muscle cells which can contribute to or lead to type 2 diabetes. But they've also found that in highly trained endurance athletes they also have a large number of lipid droplets in their muscles. However, the large number of lipid droplets droplets in their muscles is actually associated with an increase in insulin sensitivity in those muscles. So actually it's the exact opposite of what happens or the exact opposite result of what happens with someone with type 2 diabetes. So how can this be? How can a high number of fat droplets in one person lead to a decrease in insulin sensitivity where a large number of fat droplets in someone else leads to an increase in insulin sensitivity. Interesting, and that's why it's called a paradox. So what they found, and I'm gonna link uh, several articles here below this uh, video so you can dive in a little bit deeper. But what they found is the fat droplets in the highly trained athletes are there for uh, easy access from the mitochondria to be able to access that fat and burn that fat. So might it be also true that uh, because there's decreased glucose tolerance and people with diabetes aren't able to use glucose in their muscles, perhaps that fat is there also as an alternative fuel source for the mitochondria. Could it be that perhaps the fat is accumulating in the muscles, not causing insulin resistance, but because of insulin resistance? Perhaps the people who, uh, the athletes, are insulin sensitive, not because of the fat droplets in the muscle, but they're insulin sensitive because they're lean and active and healthy. There's one study that, again, I'm gonna link up below here, that showed that uh, people with type 2 diabetes who have an accumulation of lipid droplets in the muscles, when they start exercising, they actually utilize that fat and immediately those fat droplets dissipate. So it's not that, perhaps, it's not that it's the accumulation of these lipid droplets that causes insulin resistance, but there's an accumulation of lipid droplets because of insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia and glucose intolerance. So the muscles in people with type 2 diabetes are not able to properly utilize glucose, and so they start accumulating these lipid droplets as a way to be able to fuel the mitochondria. So again, I'll link up some articles here, but uh, things aren't always what they necessarily appear. And so the big takeaway here, 
oftentimes this is proposed as a way of convincing people that eating a high fat diet, for example, is a bad thing because if you eat a lot of fat, you're gonna start storing fat in the muscles, which is gonna to lead to diabetes. And uh, that has not really been uh, proven to be true. In fact, there's not necessarily a direct link between dietary fat, blood fats, fat in the liver, and fat in the muscles. There is a link, as I mentioned earlier, between hepatic fat, fat in the liver, and insulin resistance and diabetes, intramyocellular lipids, insulin resistance and diabetes, and visceral fat and diabetes. But there's not a link necessarily between people who are eating a high fat diet and those things, particularly a low carbohydrate, high fat diet. So we have to be a little bit careful with the assumptions. Just because there's fat accumulating in the muscle does not necessarily mean that's a bad thing. Uh, again, the athlete's paradox shows that even well-trained endurance athletes will store fat in their muscle tissue. So we have to look a little bit beyond that and look at uh, the person's ability to utilize glucose properly, to burn fat appropriately in the mitochondria. And uh, there's a lot of factors involved with that other than just the macronutrient makeup of the diet. In other words, uh, how much fat you're eating. All right, guys, so I hope that makes sense. Something to think about. Check out the articles below uh, to learn a little bit more about this. And uh, I'll be back with another video soon. This is Dr. Brian Mole, the Diabetes Coach.